Hi Kamal, welcome to the Charm YouTube channel. So you are a senior engineer at DigitalOcean, is that correct? Yes, thanks. <laughs> uh, thanks, Vash. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Do you want to tell us a little bit about um, who you are, your background, and a little bit about what DigitalOcean does? Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, my name is Kamal. Um, one of the software engineers um, working on the app platform product at DigitalOcean. So those of you who are not familiar, DigitalOcean is a cloud provider. And among you know, the products that we offer is app platform, which is uh, basically an easy platform fully managed uh, for deploying and building applications. So it's basically a pass type platform with support for serverless um, functions as well. And the, the premise of it is um, you know, just just like with the past platform, you want to focus on building out your application, your website. You don't want to worry about managing servers or um, infrastructure at all. So with that platform, you basically give us your code, we'll build it for you, deploy it. You know, with like uh, basically anything that you want out of a like hosting platform with you know day two features like monitoring, alerts, and uh, CDN, and so on. Um, so really just focus on actually building out your application and, you know, your business. Nice. As somebody who has like very little DevOps experience, the uh, the idea of uh, just being able to write the code and having you handle all the deployment and stuff like that is very appealing to me. I like it. I like it. Um, and then do you want to tell us a little bit about um, your background? How did you come to be a software engineer at DigitalOcean? So I've actually... Um, I've been at DigitalOcean for a little over uh, eight, nine years now, which is sounds like ancient in tech times, but um, I haven't always been a software engineer. Um, I actually started out in the developer relations field. So I started out as a community manager, actually, uh, for a few years. And then as we built out the DevRel team, I uh, moved to a, uh, like a developer advocate role. And about two and a half years ago, I joined the app platform team as a software engineer. Nice. I like it. So were you able to get, uh, I guess you're able to, to keep refining your coding skills while you're also doing community management and all that good stuff? Yeah, for sure. I, actually, I, that's, that's one, of my, one of my favorite things about um, the developer relations phase. I feel like it's, it's a pretty nice balance of like actually doing software engineering type of work. Right. Do you, mm -hmm. you know, you're working with code, you're building out apps, you're um, interacting with other customers and people who are doing that on a day to day basis. But mm -hmm. at the same time, um, you know, you're also like handling that community aspect. So you're actually, you know, building a relationship with, I mean, I'm talking to you <laughs> about this, like, <laughs> you know, all about this, right? You're building a relationship with your users and like actual connection, meaningful connections with them. Yeah, it's really nice to see the the kind of end like end result in a way of like how what the whole team is like working really hard to build, how that's being received and like being able to be that person that kind of speaks on behalf of like both the community and the developers behind it is mm -hmm. like a really unique and uh yeah, very fun role. I I agree. I think it's a very fun space and uh, I'm excited that there's more awareness around it as well. So so you decided that you enjoyed um that you want, you wanted to focus in on the coding, on the coding more for now, and uh, curious what. So, what's your background with coding? Uh, what's your? Do you have a favorite language that uh, you work either you work with on a day to day, or that got you really passionate about programming? So, I started started out programming in like in middle school, high school, and really As all is huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like all I do is look up these YouTube tutorials and just like copy along. I do what they did, mm -hmm. and you know you get a, a fully working thing in front of you. And you know over the years, just you know, started learning more. Um, I also studied computer science, um, mm -hmm. like formally at uh, university, nice. um, which also like you know helped us flesh out the actual you know foundational basics. But it's definitely been a journey. I started out with PHP. Which still has a it holds a special place a special in my heart, place you know. Heart, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's actually it's good to see like all the recent developments with PHP. Like it's 
I know Laravel is like very, very, a lot of people in the PHP space are like super stoked about Laravel. I, not that I know anything about what it does, but all I know is that people are excited about it. <laughs> so I know about it. <laughs> yeah, Laravel was, um, it was a pretty like large um, jump ahead into space, I'd say. Like sure, That's there great. were other frameworks, but I feel like it, it did a lot at, you know, easing the adoption of, you know, like proper tooling and mm. like, you know, coding practices, because, you know, PHP has a history of not, you know, being kind of a, like, not the best language. Like, <laughs> you could say like, that. You yeah, could say that. As it, general <laughs> consensus on the internet. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the current state of things is, you know, it's, it's very impressive. That's good. That's good. And uh, on your day-to-day at uh, Dio, can I call it Dio? Mm-hmm. Like we're friends, Dio, yes. as a nickname, <laughs> you know. Um, so your day to day there, uh, what what languages are you working with? What's your stack? Um, I mostly work with Go for the most part. Yes. Um, I do um, also work with Bash. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Quite often. <laughs> Both of them, I'm like nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I have a I have a mixed relationship with Bash. Honestly, it's I like it. It's very convenient. But, you know, it's just a little painful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have to be really careful about, you know, avoiding pitfalls and doing things the right way. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, tools like Shellcheck and I'll say Shellcheck, it's amazing. It oh, is basically cool. like a linter for Bash. It oh. catches all of these, you know, little pitfalls that you might fall into and um, tries to really guide you through best practices. And what I love mm-hmm. about it is um, it has actual examples for each, you know, like issue that it highlights. It shows you an example of like why you might be doing that, what you should be doing instead. And, you know, just also explains the rationale behind its, its tips and suggestions. So it's mm-hmm. also like it helped me really, you know, learn the language properly. Nice. Yeah, I like that about Linter is it's like, hey, hey, you, stop writing bad code. And then you, you're like, okay, I guess I should fix that. Right. <laughs> With your experience, do you have any tips for anybody who is newer in the developer space? One thing that is like important to call, I feel like nowadays, especially with all of these like new frameworks popping up every, every day, it's like a new framework or like you need to use this. Like everything you're using is terrible. There's this new shiny thing that you've got to use. Yeah. And... It, it's easy to get overwhelmed. I mean, I still get overwhelmed. Like I, whenever I have to build out something with like Node.js, because I don't use it often, I don't use it on a day-to-day basis. Um, mm-hmm. I just, you know, there's a lot out there. Like I've taken just a few months break and I have to catch up on, on all the things. Um, yeah. So I guess, you know, long story short, my tip is there's always going to be new fancy shiny stuff. It's cool to like experiment with things and learn. But you don't, I say you don't have to worry about all of it because it can get mm-hmm. pretty overwhelming very quickly. Yeah. The, the general basics, uh, you know, no matter what framework you use, you always have that, you know, a very similar foundation of how to do things. So mm-hmm. as long as you, you know, continue to build out like what, what you're learning and, you know, even if like the tools that you're using are not like the, the newest, shiniest things, like, Mm-hmm. keep going and yeah you'll you'll do great i agree i think also it's like having that understanding of like why it works and kind of having that that baseline of like yeah a little bit of how it's working under the hood when you're using these things it's like that helps a lot with also making like making your skills more transferable so i, I super agree on that um that's right. a great that's a great tip i like it yeah <laughs> it's so yeah. true though it's like especially when they come out with like the memes that are like your it's like whatever framework that you're <laughs> using is like the joke framework and you're like oh no does this mean i have to change how i am it's like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you came at me with the memes that's a low blow right <laughs> uh, oh. you brought up a good point though i just want to say real quick um like actually you know wanting to learn how things work behind the scenes. It's also, mm-hmm. I, I feel for me, you know, it depends on how you prefer to learn as a person. But for me personally, I find that a really valuable skill, um, just maintaining that like tingle of curiosity. Um, yeah. Like it really helps you just build out the mental model of how things work. And, mm-hmm. you know, if like the way I like to learn, like, okay, when I first got started with Go 
and any other language I've learned, I've learned. I prefer to just dive right in and, mm -hmm. you know, think of like something that I want to build. Um, and whether it be like actually going through like the pain of actually trying to build it out and piecing together like resources and, you know, stack overflow posts and whatnot, or actually, yeah. you know, following a tutorial, um, maybe like finding a pre-built project and then just like, look at the code, see what, what it does. I find that mm -hmm. to be really helpful to actually, you know, learn, learn a new language because you're not only learning like the actual, you know, syntax and, and, and so on. Um, you're also just getting a, like an idea of how to structure your code and how to yeah. do things in a way that's like, um, like idiomatic with yeah. the language or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. There, um, there's been a more than one time where, yeah, it's like you, you dive straight into a project or like me, I'm talking about me specifically, dive like straight, straight into a project, so over ambitious. And then I end up like, uh, looking at, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to contribute to this code. And I ended up actually just like, uh, drawing out how things work. And that seems to help me a lot. Like kind of that visualizing, like how things are actually like tying together, like working. I'm like, got like arrows pointing at its function being like, I think it does this a question mark. And like, yeah. So agree with going full force and, uh, drawing things out is very helpful for me and, uh, super agree. I think the video tutorials are a great place to start for so many people. And, you know, from there, once you start getting more comfortable, it's like then documentation seems less scary and stuff like that. So I like it.